Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, we're gonna go over some sun annuals that we use in our garden in Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, like I talked about in the, uh, the shade annual video, if you've watched that, a lot of these things aren't necessarily true annuals. A true annual would be something that germinates from a seed, comes up, flowers, sets seeds, and then dies. And then those seeds would come up the next year. But a lot of these things are actually perennial in Southern areas, and then uh, we use them as annuals. I'm, again, we're just gonna go over some of the things that we like to use in our garden here in Raleigh. Not gonna talk, we don't really use any geraniums. Uh, we use uh, very, very little calabrocoa, uh, petunias we don't use a lot of in our garden. So there'll be some obvious things missing and I'll put up a list toward the end of the video on lots of other things that work well in a full sun situation for annual flower color during the summer. And we use annuals as fillers between our shrubs and our perennial borders and those kinds of things and all, all to invite pollinators into the garden. So pretty much everything you're gonna see here um, is, is mostly for pollinators. Some of the shade annual things we talked about were just for foliage color because there's not as many flowering things in shady spaces, but out in the sun, you know, we can get lots and lots of flowers. We're gonna start with lantana. Lantana is an interesting one because uh, for us in zone 7B, there are several lantana that are perennial. As a group though, they're probably mostly hardy from about zones nine to 11, where they'd come back every year. Folks in Florida have a problem with these being invasive. There are actually native, there are a couple species of native uh, lantana, maybe more than that in Florida and some of these other lantanas that we use have crossed with those and created hybrids that are invasive in the state of Florida. But for us, winter controls them, winter controls the seed production. And for folks even further north, they're just definitely annuals. But these go into full sun, incredibly drought tolerant. They come in shades of uh, yellow, oranges, uh, bicolor flowers where you'll have orange and yellow in the same flower. These are they're upright varieties that can reach six by six in a single season. You know, they'll die, literally die to the ground and then, you know, in, in cold enough weather and come back and get six foot tall, six foot wide. And then trailing ones, ground cover ones, ones that we can use in hanging baskets. They, they, you know, they've been bred to just hang over the edge of a basket. Then extremely drought tolerant. They are toxic to animals if they eat them, but I don't think anything's gonna eat this thing. It's really, it, it, it's, the smell of the foliage is, is quite strong, so I think that would keep uh, any chewing, chewing visitors away from it. Pollinators absolutely love these. Our lantana is amongst the top visited thing by native and you know honey native pollinators and honeybees. Uh, everything loves them. They just bloom like crazy. Again, uh, this is an invasive plant down in the deep south, but for us, it's just a great annual that doesn't cause us any issues, and it comes in every color under the spectrum. And you just plant it water it in, it becomes drought tolerant very, very quickly, and it rewards you all summer long. Here's a great bicolor variety. Some of the more hardy varieties that we use up in Raleigh are New Gold, which is a, a yellow one. One called Carlos that's a similar color to this one. It tends to be hardy. Miss Huff Lantana, and then we have a Chapel Hill Miss Huff Lantana in our garden in Raleigh, and those four uh, probably a few more, but those four have proven to be the most hardy. If they're spring planted and they grow all season, typically they'll come back in zone 7B. You, these are definitely helped by giving them a haircut in the middle of summer. So if you cut these back, you'll regenerate new flowers and new growth. Uh, the seed production that these try to make can slow the actual flowering down during the middle of summer. Not heavy feeders. They don't need a whole lot of extra fertilizer and, and in the areas we treat as annuals, we're adding comp new compost every season. And so that compost and a couple small applications of organic fertilizer keep these lantana blooming all summer. Next up is pentas. We use pentas in the garden every single year. They come in reds and lavenders and pinks and whites, uh, just a wide selection of pentas available. Uh, some people call these Egyptian stars. Great for pollinators, really beautiful foliage. This is another one that's like New Guinea and Patience or some of the sun patients where the foliage is just as impressive to me as the flowering parts. And you'll see some variation in the color of the foliage as well in, in some varieties. Pollinators absolutely love these. So you're gonna get bees, butterflies, hummingbirds. What happens though is these flowers are so long lived, you'll see all of a sudden less interest 
from the pollinators on these. Uh, we'll talk about Angelonia does the same thing. It's coming up in the video. The flowers last so long, there's nothing left in there for them. And so when we see less pollinators on them, we give these a haircut. If you just give them a little bit of a haircut, you know, you can take some head shears off with their heads. New growth comes out, new flowers comes out. The new flowers have nectar and the pollinators absolutely, absolutely love them. These are another one of those that's kind of similar. Another thing that's similar with New Guinea impatiens is they like kind of semi-moist conditions. These will wilt in the afternoon. They're very heat tolerant, but they're not dry feet tolerant. Um, they don't. I don't want you. I don't want to put them in a wet area. But these will let you know in the afternoon sometimes that they need water. <laughs> They'll just be like this. Uh, but give them some water. They they come right back out of it. These are very rewarding. Also the size that they get. You know, some I've talked about on some of the annuals. Uh, I prefer to buy them in four packs or six packs or start my own seed. But with pentas like this, they're going to get so big during the season. I feel like it's definitely worth the money to spend, you know, on a, on a slightly larger container because I'm going to get so much out of it during the growing season. But a haircut two or three times during the summer and these just hummingbirds absolutely love them. So thank you very much to Fairview Garden Center for letting us come out today and film these sun uh, annuals and we were here the other day and filmed a shade annual video if you haven't watched that video definitely go back and take a look at that we have a beautiful selection here in the uh, southern part of Raleigh next up we use a lot of gomfrina and gomfrina comes in white and lavender and kind of slight mixes of whites and pinks and lavenders just absolutely fantastic our native bees love them uh, we plant a lot of our front border in these the last couple of years and, you know you're rewarded the whole summer long they are somewhat susceptible to powdery mildew so giving them a couple reasons giving them a haircut during the middle of summer will keep them recharged and blooming well but it'll also add a little bit of air movement to the bed and prevent some of that powdery mildew issues that you might get on them they can reach 24 inches in height something like that but it can be controlled a little bit lower they just bloom and bloom and bloom when we when we prune our annuals during the summer we don't prune them all at one time so we don't take them all away from the pollinators at once. We'll just prune a few at the time, come back in a week and, and prune a few more. They take just kind of average well-drained soil, really easy. Um, you can do these from seed, you can buy them in containers. There's some new um, hybrid varieties that are you know, very rigidly upright and look fantastic, <clears throat> like the one you're looking at now. Gonfrein is extremely heat and drought tolerant. We just don't have it's one of those that you can just plant and forget. Again, we're refreshing our compost every year. We're fertilizing them once, maybe twice, and I've never had to do anything more than that. Next up is ageratum. We do a lot of, we do a lot of ageratum. Uh, these can be, the camera will never pick up purples and blues very well, but this, this one right here is kind of a bluish, a bluish purple. We have a red one this year. They come in whites, they come in blues, they come in purples, all kinds of shades. They also come in really compact habits. This one that I'm holding is called Bumblebee and I can tell it's a really, really compact growing variety. We grow some that are, can get three by three feet by three feet in a single season. These will, you know, they're in the full sun video right now, but these are actually quite shade tolerant. We've had them in part shade in the garden the last couple of years as well and they've done quite well they're a little bit more loose form but they bloom like crazy pollinators really love these uh, you you're going to get you're going to get bees all kinds of interesting pollinators hummingbirds butterflies you know they equal opportunity uh, pollinator plant uh, and that's why it's one of our favorites it's Definitely one that benefits from a little bit of a reset occasionally during the summer. So a little bit of deadheading, a little bit of cleaning it up uh, a couple times during the season. If you just shear, shear it off, it'll reward you by coming out and blooming even heavier. Just even moisture, uh, not a lot of fertilizer needs. We do some of these from seed and the seed is super tiny, 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 tiny seeds. It's difficult to get one per cell. Uh, some of these newer ones that are compact like this one would definitely be worth buying. Great con great container plants and just all around one of our top you know top go-to annuals in our garden what you're looking at here is kufia and we grow lots of different varieties of kufia some people call them cigar plants or firecracker plants uh, they come in these ranges from orange flowers red flowers really interesting different kinds of growth habits we grow one called bat face 
Hummingbirds and butterflies absolutely love these. It won't be the showiest thing in your garden, although the foliage looks great, the flowers look great. We'll use these in containers, use them in the ground. Uh, just a great plant to draw pollinators into your garden. They're humidity tolerant, they're uh, heat tolerant, drought tolerant, really low maintenance. We'll give these a haircut in the middle of summer like other things. Uh, most of the Kufia species, or I think all of the Kufia species are native to the Americas, so North and South America, and I'll slide this in there. Mexican heather is actually uh, a Kufia as well, and so, you know, very different, very different, but we absolutely love these. They're, we try to look for different varieties each year and, and, in, and other cultivars each year because they're all different, interesting, and the hummingbirds, probably they're right at the top of their list. Next up is marigolds, and they come in all shapes and sizes. We have giant marigolds that get, you know, giant, and then more compact versions as well. You can normally get marigolds as uh, bedding plants like this in four packs and six packs, which I like. I've always considered marigolds to kind of be a cool season annual. You know, they'll, they'll slow down a little bit during the peak summer heat and then actually perform quite well in the fall. Uh, I sold a lot of marigolds for the fall because I actually think they're almost better than mums for fall color. You know, as the nighttime temperatures cool down, these tend to really explode. You'll see a lot of interplanting with folks using marigolds in their garden for pest control. I don't know if any of that stuff actually works. Somebody, somebody down below is gonna say it definitely works, but you know, I, I don't know if any of those things actually work, but it certainly makes your vegetable garden more showy, uh, if, if nothing else. The only, they're, they're really pretty pest free and drought tolerant, perform really well. Again, slow down a bit during the summer. We find that rabbits do eat them. Most things avoid them, but rabbits for some reason, you know, they're not deterred by the uh, odor that you get from these marigolds at all for some reason, but they come in all kinds of colors and shapes. Really easy, really easy plant to add color in the garden. And we tend, typically will you know, plant these and just forget them. Again, they'll bloom heavily, slow down a bit during peak summer, and then come, you know, really put on a show late summer in the fall here in the south. Probably in the summer, they're going to perform better. This is another thing about making this video about summer full sun annuals, because if you're in the way north, you can do snapdragons and pansies and violas during the summertime, whereas down here, those are winter annuals for us. So that would be on my list if I was, you know, in zone five, way north of where we are here. The, the annuals that we have to use for full sun down here have to be really, really rugged plants uh, that are used to, you know, being in the, the, you know, that type of sunlight. But marigolds, fantastic. We use them every year. We'll, we can start some from seed. We buy some as bedding plants. And, you know, you can get a lot of bang for your buck buying, you know, six packs and four packs of these things. And you can add all this uh, showiness to your garden. Just make sure you're looking you know, at what size the marigold you're buying gets, because that's gonna be important as to how you're gonna lay out your annual bed. If you get one that gets three feet tall in a season, that's gonna be significant where there are ones that stay less than a foot tall. This is your traditional salvia that we use as an annual in the garden. We use a ton of salvia, whether they're perennial, ones that are marginal and might come back or might not come back. And then we use the ones that are more considered uh, annuals in our area. Again, we're in zone 7B in Raleigh. Pretty much all of these salvias are perennial somewhere. So, you know, this one might be perennial in zone, just zone 9, 10, and 11, you know, whereas others are hardy all the way up to zone 5 and zone 4. So you can have perennial and annual salvias. We buy some, again, that are marginal that get quite large, hoping they'll come back, and sometimes they do and sometimes, sometimes they don't. This is one of the best pollinator plants you can add to your garden. I don't care what salvia you're adding. They're, they're also in the Lamiaceae or the mint family. And so they have fragrant foliage, fragrant everything. And so you don't get deer eating them. You don't get rabbits eating them. Uh, they perform all summer long. Most all of them are incredibly sun tolerant. All benefit from a haircut during the middle of the summer, whether you're growing perennial salvias, annual salvias, however you're growing them. They'll, at marigolds too, I didn't say that on the marigolds, they definitely benefit from deadheading as well, but there's really nothing probably overall if you're, if you're evaluating every annual or every perennial in our garden. You know, if we, if we looked at the salvias as a group, they're probably the thing that blooms the longest 
requires the least attention other than coming in and deadheading it during the summer and has consistently the most pollinators on it. They're just making new flowers constantly. They're just constantly making uh, everything that the pollinators want. We'll get bumblebees on these and most of these flowers are designed for butterflies and hummingbirds, something with a long proboscis to get down in there, you know, but the bees, the bumblebees just figure out how to drill down into the back of them and cheat the system. And so the bumblebees absolutely love these as well, our, na our native bumblebees. But salvia, of course, right at the top of the list. Our main go-to annual salvia in our garden is summer jewels. Again, it's a perennial in the deep south, but for us, it, it's typically an annual. The other thing you're looking at right now is a purple uh, bedding plant salvia these are kind of, you can get salvias in lavenders and whites and reds and purples and you know just depending on the varieties you know color the color spectrum is just wide open for salvia next up for us is celosia uh, we grow lots of celosia in the garden some of them can get a bit seedy so this is one that we have to uh you know typically pull out the next season a little bit they'll come up they'll come up here and there not all of them do but so, a few of them do a lot of variability in celosia. So we, we grow a lot of these new look uh, celosias. They're tough as nails. They need absolutely nothing. We can, uh, again, you can typically find these in bedding plants like this. And you'll see the variation in all the colors. There's pink and red and yellow, bright, bright colors. And then you'll get these subtle kind of reds and maroons and that kind of thing. You can get stem color on them. So you got yellow stems on these you got pink stems on these so that that's adding color as well you'll see we'll have celosia that we keep cut down you know prune a few times in our in our our larger annual displays and we can keep them somewhere in the 12 to 18 inch range and in, in varieties that only get that big and then we have a couple that are seven or eight feet tall by the end of the season. Like Steph says, these will come up in the cracks in the concrete and anywhere else you want. This is one, Celosia is one you can plant and forget. They really don't have to do a lot of watering once they're established. They don't need a lot of fertilizer. They just don't need hardly anything from you. And pollinators absolutely love them. It doesn't look like a traditional uh, type of flower that you, know, you would see pollinators coming to, but they just, uh, they flock to them absolutely covered in them all day long and again the crazy amount of variability in celosia also makes them interesting with foliage color stem color flower color heights sizes like i had talked about on the pentas earlier these flowers last a long time and they can actually run out of nectar if you see some dip in the amount of bees and it's mostly bees that really 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 love these uh, native bees and and honeybees uh, when you, if you see them slow down on them, that just kind of tells you those flowers are spent, even though there's still some color in them. And you can give these a haircut, uh, just a real quick haircut right across the top and uh, new flowers will form, new growth will form and you'll, your bees will be right back on the new flowers. Next up is Angelonia. We use a lot of Angelonia in the garden every year. These are absolutely fantastic. They remind us of snapdragons, but we grow snapdragons in the winter time, but during the summer, this is a similar replacement for it. You'll find these in white and then shades of blue and you'll find bicolors and uh, really, really lots of vibrant colors in these. This is an interesting one because I've talked about on the pentas and then again on a couple of the others like celosias where the flowers just kind of run out of nectar, but then the flower sticks around and you see less pollinators on them. These do the exact same thing. And these will keep these flowers for months and months and months uh, with the zero pollinators on them. Uh, so, you, you know, I leave that up to you. They're quite showy, uh, but if you don't give them the occasional haircut, you definitely lose pollinators for sure. There are a couple that are available in seed, but uh, not a lot. So we use, we'll use that, uh, uh, Serenita mix and there's one other mix that are available from seed a lot of the new but there are a lot of new ones out here that are incredibly showy and on, even on this very small plant back here you can see how many flowers the flowers are bigger so you know through breeding we're seeing you know these really explode with more color and more vibrancy they'll take um, pretty much full sun all day long. We have probably ours in the back garden where we where use them are in a little bit of light shade. So they will take a little bit of light shade. Great for containers, great to have an upright kind of spiky piece in your containers. 
and then you can put something that you know grows flat across the container in there with it we'll again prune these a couple times during the summer because we're trying to get the pollinators you can choose whether to do that or not another one that's a perennial in the deep south but up here in zone seven where we are they're definitely used as annuals and incredibly showy annuals as well and you know again when the flowers are fresh the pollinators are all over these it's one of one of our absolute favorites next up for us is vinca and this is actually one of the few things that are in our garden that we don't really plant for pollinators we'll see butterflies on them we don't just don't see as many uh, pollinators on vinca overall but it has great foliage it's great to line the front of the annual borders with but it gets so full and bushy over the course of the season rabbits don't eat it which is a plus for us in an in an, in an urban in an urban space so this is just kind of a low growing filler that we use although there are vincas that can get quite tall you want to read the tag there's some definitely newer ones that are more compact there's been a lot of breeding to help with disease resistance in vinca same thing with impatience where i went through a long period of time where i just didn't plant very much vinca because it was just problematic in the garden. You want these not in a wet space, some place that it will definitely dry out in between. Again, we're planting them in a little bit of compost, fertilizing them lightly. And the new varieties, uh, again, through plant breeding, we have better foliage, better flowers, hold up better in the summer heat. They don't just melt back. Again, I just took a break from Vinca for, for several years and then now they're just they're just fantastic and we we lined our path in the front garden last year with them and there was almost pretty much nothing showier in the garden again not as many pollinators as some of our other things but we really love them read the tags of the ones that you're buying to make sure that they're going to be you know compact growing varieties if you need compact growing varieties another nice thing about vinca is you're typically going to be able to you're typically going to be able to find it in a four pack or a six pack which will save you a little bit of money We've done 10 and I'm going to throw in one more. Again, I definitely want to point out again, this is Calabrocoa on the other side of the table and you can see, you know, the breeding work in Calabrocoa and Petunias and Verbena are fantastic. And so there are lots of great varieties. We tend, no particular reason we're not using them. We just have kind of a set group of things that we use and then a lot more than what we're showing you uh, in this video. We're at Fairview Garden Center again in Raleigh, North Carolina and they have this incredible a selection of annuals here and it's indoor shopping if it happens to be a, a happens to be a rainy day so i'm going to wrap this up with portulaca this will be 11 here in this video and then there's the list here of lots of other things we use or other things that could go in the full sun and be used as annual flowers mostly for pollinators uh, portulaca is great for butterflies but the main thing it's great for is just being the lowest maintenance of all of, of all the summer annuals. What you'll get on these is the flowers will close up in the evening, like that one, or on cloudy days, and then they open up during the bright part of the day. You can use these in hanging baskets, use them in containers. They typically like well-drained kind of sandy soils. So if you're planting them in the ground, make sure you're elevating them a bit if it's a space that uh, could, could potentially stay wet at all. They really just like to dry out and, and just be ignored. This is one you can use in a hanging basket if you're the type of person that might miss a watering here or there. Uh, so we'll use these. They can, uh, they can be a little bit seedy. Uh, depends, prob that's probably variety dependent, but you can get a couple coming back the next year. And again, you can just choose whether or not to keep them. Sometimes they perennialize for us, but they are, they're definitely perennials well south of here. And occasionally we'll get a winter that doesn't actually kill them. These are not particularly, they're right at, like if we were here a day later, this entire flat would be this pink. They come in lots of different colors, really easy. And again, if you're, if you know you are not someone who's going to do a lot of maintenance to your annuals, or you might happen to forget to water them, then Portulaca is definitely a, a good one for you. So thanks again to Fairview Garden Center. And thanks again for following the channel and watching and be sure you're subscribed to the channel because uh, during the summer, pretty much everything we just showed you will be in full bloom in our garden, plus lots and lots more. Thanks.